Ayan. Our next problem naman will be problem 1-7. Problem 1-7. So we have Cavalier Company provided the following information on December 31, 2020. So let's assume na December 31, 2020 palagi ang ating end ng reporting period. So first we have the accounts payable of 6,500,000 pesos, our notes payable to bank ng 8,000,000 pesos, then our interest payable of 150,000, then also, we have the mortgage payable, 10%, 2 million. Then, bonds payable of 4 million pesos. Next, we have the bank. Notes payable include two separate notes payable to first bank. And yung pangalan ng bank ko niya. Then, we have a 3 million, 10% note payable. Issued on March 1, 2019. Payable on demand. Then, interest is payable every 6 months. Ito pa lang tayo. Sa pangalawa to eh. Itong asterisk na to, para siya dito. So, no. Dito sa 8 million natin. So, ang ating account payable, kagaya ng nasa discussion natin on the theories and concepts of our liabilities sa current Diba? Ang ating trade payables and yung mga accruals sa ating mga employees, they are classified as current. Si 6.5, current na siya. Tapos, mag-move na tayo kay 8 million. Ito na siya. Dito na siya sa unang asteris. So, balik tayo. Yung una, yung 3 million niya daw na 10% note yung 3 million nitong 8 million na to sabe na issue siya nung 2019 pa payable on demand again we have this blue payable on demand tapos interest niya daw every 6 months pero the clue is payable on demand so the 3 million here is classified as current so ayun na yung mga current natin then Yung 5 million ng 8 million natin is 11% note na in ng January 2, 2020. On December 31, 2020, the entity negotiated a written agreement with the bank to replace the note with a 2-year 5 million peso 10% note to be issued on January 2, 2021. Just like what's written here, it is a non-current Y yung 5 million natin is non-current. Bakit po? Kasi, sabi, eto rin, no? this is the clue, is on December 31, 2020, again, ang refinancing agreement, no? sabi kasi, pagka kasi sinabi na re-replace, ayan, magre-refinance ka. Kagaya ulit nung nasa discussion natin on non-current na liabilities, kapag ito ay natapos, no? ang agreement ay natapos ng um, on or before the day of the reporting period. So, it will be classified as non-current kasi nga, this is an adjusting event. So, non-current natin, 5 million. Next, we have the 10% mortgage note was issued on October 1, 2019 with a term of 10 years. So, dito na tayo. Um, so, ano to, no? And new mortgage, mortgage, yan mortgage note. Ito yon yung two million. We also have this ano no no interest payable natin. Kasali din siya sa ating current. So, and current din siya. Tapos, tong ating Ayan, doon na tayo sa ating mortgage nga ulit. Balikan natin siya. Ayan. 10 years ang kanyang term. Terms of the note. Give the holder the right to demand immediate payment. Ito ulit. May ganito ulit. If the entity fails to make a monthly interest. 
if, di ba, kung magpe-fail lang naman siyang magbayad ng interest within 10 days of the date the payment is due. On December 31, 2020, the NTT is 3 months behind in paying the required interest. So, ano nangyari? na breach niya. So, edi demandable na siya immediately, di ba? Immediately demandable na siya. Noong December 31 siya nag-breach. Tapos, paano natin ikaklasify to? Di ba? Ayan. Current siya. Current siya kasi nga, demandable na ang ating ano, liability. It is immediately demandable or callable on demand. Wala naman sinabi na ano, nag-provide ng grace period noong December 31. Kasi nga nag-breach siya ng covenant nila, di ba? Ng agreement nila. So, if ever nag-provide ng grace period noong December 31 na yun, it is non-current. Pero this time, walang pin-provide na covenant. Naging callable lang on demand siya. So, current, itong ating um, 2 million na smart gauge. So, current. Then, we have bonds payable 4 million. When we say bonds payable, usually, this is non-current. But, let's take a look at the problem. So, the bonds payable are 10 year, 8% bonds issued on June 30, 2011 pa. Interest is payable semi-annually on June 30 and December 31. 2011 pa siya, di ba? Meaning, sa 2021, it will be reaching its 10th year. So, it is currently maturing the next year. So, for at least 12 months after the reporting period on December 31, 2020, December 31, 2021, it will be fully paid, meaning it will be classified as current. Sabi ulit doon sa discussion natin, I think it is in the part of the non-current kasi nga ibang situation siya. It is non-current normally kasi nga 10 years siya. Pero diba, meron tayong mga situations wherein uh, kahit na yung original term mo is for a period that is longer than 12 months, no? But it is falling due the next year or falling due within 12 months after the reporting period. So, it is classified as current. So, it is a special case, no? Wherein you should be analytical. So, ayun. Our requirement is to compute the total current liabilities on December 31, 2020. So, we have to add our current liabilities. First, we have 6.5 million. Please get your calculators with you so you can compute. And then, we have the 3 million on the second um, liability, yung current part niya, current portion. Next, we have the interest payable. Meron na tayong 9.5, no? 9.5 million plus 150,000, 9,650,000. And then, we add 2 million, no? 11 million, 650,000. Then, the 4 million na bonds. So, 11,650,000 plus 4 million plus 4 million we have 15,650,000 pesos if you got it right. Congratulations. So, ayan. Thank you for listening. I know that you are um, undergoing different obstacles right now. So, please keep going. Take care of yourselves and God bless us. Please subscribe also to our channel. Share this video if you think this will be very helpful to everyone. So, I love you all. Mwah.